Points of Light endeavors to improve children's health and oral health by connecting children with dentists, particularly infants. Diet and nutritional counseling is a primary component of preventive oral health. With infants, there are subtle yet significant considerations regarding healthy development. Therefore, we are here to discuss infant and toddler nutrition. Tanya, what are the important things parents can do to establish healthy eating habits that may prevent chronic diseases into adulthood? I think one of the most important things that parents can do is to always remember that they're a role model for what their children see and what they later may imitate. Um, and this, especially in regards to not just the foods that they eat, that they prefer, that they choose on a daily basis, but also their eating habits, um, how much snacking they do, do they sit at the table, uh, you know, at, at mealtime. So that's an important concept. And I think it's even more important when children are very young and we kind of overlook that we think oh you know this is a I don't know a seven month old or eight month old they're not really paying attention but they're always watching. Peggy uh, what can a parent do to foster a preference for fruits and vegetables? Well it goes back to modeling behavior again and in in this regard uh, I, I think you have to remember that um, everyone young children included, eat with their eyes first. So if you have a variety of things on the table that your child is choosing from, and um, uh, that looks pretty, it looks interesting, they see mommy or daddy eating those foods, and, then, and, and enjoying those foods. Um, I think we have to remember that children pick up on your emotions very quickly and, and, and model that. So if you look like you're enjoying the steamed broccoli, um, they're going to want to try the steamed broccoli. And um, so uh, that, that's really important. And uh, they will then eat more variety of the foods that you, just like you eat. Penny, what foods should be avoided and why? Really, the only things that should be avoided are choking foods. And choking foods would be things like um, hard candy, nuts, popcorn, um, the, the, real young, uh, raw vegetables and fruits. Some of those can be choking hazards. Tanya, I'm curious, at, at what ages should solid foods be introduced and how? Well, um, I think typically what we would say as probably pediatricians and moms and dietitians is that uh, the first solid food when it comes uh, somewhere between this, this time period of four to six months, but you'll find that their children are very different or babies, infants are very different with regard to how accepting they are of solid food. But within this window of four to six months, and I think most would say that the first solid food should be rice cereal. It's uh, least likely to trigger any kind of intolerance. And if it's the proper kind, um, infant rice cereal, then it's got added iron because iron is probably gonna be the one limiting nutrient um, since breast milk isn't very high in it, even though it's better absorbed form of iron and certainly a formula and later cow's milk. So iron tends to be a little bit of an issue. And after the introduction of the rice, which should never be in the bottle, should be always be by a spoon, um, then you can look to other grains. And I think that the key thing is to, and they should probably be infant cereal because again, there'll be that added iron, is to space the introduction of anything new, maybe a couple, three days, two or three days. And that spacing means that you'll be able to identify any kind of potential intolerance or food allergy, and you'll know what caused it.